Hello, I'm Steve Reyes, Product Manager for Anmitsu. What we're going to show here is the way that we would normally typically mount our 220 GHz system, the broadband system, ME7838G, onto a probe station. In this case, it's the MPI TS200 uh, series probe station. So we'll go through some of the basic steps on how we mount the probes onto the modules and mount the modules onto the station. Uh, so it's mostly just a, a demonstration of the setup and um, in other episodes we'll deal more with the uh, calibration aspects of it. Okay, so uh, to start off with, the, um, the VectorStar system uh, has the uh, VNA, which is a 7 gigahertz VNA, uh, with the appropriate millimeter wave modules and uh, millimeter wave test set. Um, the test set is uh, very standard compared to our other broadband systems. So the 220 gigahertz system is not unique in the sense of the setup between the VNA and the test set as much as the, the uniqueness of the modules, the nonlinear transition line modules. Uh, so the, uh, the system is typically going to be set up behind the probe station and normally you would want to uh, elevate the uh, test port of the VNA so that the, the cables have uh, good access to where the modules are going to be mounted. And so the elevation of the, uh, of the system is your first consideration. And in this case, we had a system mounted on one of our synthesizers, which can often be used for as a second source for things like mixer measurements or differential measurements. Uh, this particular system has an uh, internal uh, two sources and we can do active uh, differential tuning uh, you know just using the internal sources um, so in terms of uh, the modules themselves again we have the MA uh, 25400A module which uh, operates up to 220 gigahertz so the VNA uh, is giving you the baseband frequency from 70 kilohertz up to 54 gigahertz and then internally we have the sources that go from 54 gigahertz up to 220 gigahertz. And the upper end frequency is dependent on the model of, of module that you use. Uh, so we have 110 gigahertz modules and we have 145 gigahertz modules. And the newest uh, addition to the family is the MA25400A uh, going up to 220 gigahertz. Now, um, typically the uh, test port on the module is going to interface with a probe. And how you mount the probe onto the module is a key aspect of the overall integrity of the measurement system. And uh, typically, you'll see a one millimeter connector uh, for systems that go up to 110, 120 gigahertz. Uh, we have a 0.8 uh, connector, 0.8 millimeter connector, that goes up to 145 gigahertz. Now, in order to get to 220, uh, instead of designing another threaded connector, we decided to create an interface that would directly connect to the probe without using threads. And the way that we do that is using a UG387 uh, flange, which is commonly used in waveguide types of uh, measurement systems. And uh, the, the UG387 uh, therefore has the tolerances that allow connection uh, up to 220 gigahertz with good repeatability. So what we use um, the, the flange for is to, um, to align the pins on the, on the probe and on the module so that they create the mating interface uh, but without having to do the threading. The threads we found uh, can wear and um, create some alignment issues after a period of time. And we're finding that the, th uh, the, the flange approach uh, is providing uh, much more repeatability. So, so that's what we're doing is um, you know, connecting our, our probe onto the module using the, the flange uh, interface. So the first question that uh, would come up is, okay, how would I connect the probe uh, onto this module and sometimes what people do is they will um, mount the module onto the probe station and then connect the probe 
onto the module. And you can do that, uh, and there are different ways that, that you might uh, take that approach. Uh, I was going to show you a different approach uh, when using the TS-200 system. And the way that uh, MPI has designed this system is that the, the bracket uh, that mounts the module onto the positioner uh, can be taken off. And so we can bring out our module assembly out to the platen or, or on top of a, a, a position uh, point where we can have easy access to the module. And then we take our probes and mount uh, in this position. So we'll get our, our probes out. And these are uh, 75 micron pitch probes, the T220 from MPI. And so you see that the uh, probes are coming uh, mounted on a uh, mounting plate and there's also um, a cover over the probes. And so we'll take that out and then start to uh, prepare the probes uh, ready for mounting. So here we have the, um, the T220 probe uh, in, our, in this case. And so what we first do is remove it from the case. And then we can remove this mounting bracket from the probe just by disconnecting from here. Okay, so um, I mentioned about the, the, the center pin, and uh, in this case, it's a 0.6 millimeter uh, airline uh, coaxial interface. Uh, on the probe side, there is a male pin, and it has a slight protrusion from the base. And with these guides, you have some protection, uh, but you do want to be uh, aware of the fact that there is a, a uh, positive uh, pin depth to the male pin on the probe itself. On the, f on the um, module, the female is recessed in. Okay. And so uh, you see that there are the two guides, and then we have this cover. So here we have the probe assembly with the protective covers on. And one way to prepare for mounting onto the module is first take off the top protective cover since there is a top and a bottom half. Then what we can do is mount one of our screws onto onto the flange. Now we can take off the bottom cover. And so now we can mount the probe onto the module using the guide pins to help guide us in. And now that we have one of the screws already in place, we can quickly set that in very lightly, but at least it's there and it's not going to be moved around because of the guide pins. We'll keep it aligned and we can continue with mounting the other mounting screws. So I'll just go ahead and, and do that.
just want to do it a little at a time on all four sides just to make sure you get a good forward movement of the flange onto the module and you want to double check that you don't have any gaps left over after tightening it down and once you get it just snug then you can go to your torque wrench to be sure that you're equally torqued there and so now we have our probe mounted onto the module and because of the assembly uh, mechanism of this position air bracket holder, we can then slide our module into place. And there's a set screw in the back that you want to tighten down. Now we can move this chuck out of the way and um, verify that the module is in the right position and another aspect um, of this mounting scheme is that this whole uh, positioner assembly can slide forward and there's stops here to prevent it from going too far forward and so what we can do is now verify the forward position is going to be in the correct place and position relative to the second module. So I can tighten that down or I can leave it back out of the way when I'm not doing any probing. So for now I'll just bring it back to create a little more clearance. So now I can start with mounting the other module. And again, just a matter of finding a place where you can work on the module while you're mounting the, uh, the probe. So we'll get the second probe out. And again, remove the top cover first. And mount your top mounting screw. You don't want to go past the base plate. Okay, so now that we have uh, our first top mounting screw pre-mounted, we can then take off the bottom assembly of the protectors and then put our probe onto our module. Slide it in with the, with the guides and then get our initial mount and then work on the other screws to get those in place. And so movement of the probe is not having any effect on the, the 
center pin connection since the guide pins are keeping it aligned. And again, just work it a little at a time on all four sides so that you're sure that the flanges are completely mated with no gaps on the edge. And then once we have it lightly tightened, then we can do our torquing. And the torque wrench is certainly a part of the accessory kit to help you with that. Same procedure, we just slide the base into the slots, tighten it down. And it's always good to have um, some sort of cable supports. That way you don't have any flexing um, of the cables while you're moving the probes around. And it just minimizes any kind of movement. And the same procedure here in terms of uh, the sliding of the positioner on the bracket mounting uh, assembly, there's a stop here as well. And so you can verify, you know, that it goes to the proper position. And you can pull these back a little further just to be sure that you have plenty of clearance. So um, the chuck has ceramic uh, chucks for the calibration substrates, which is always a good idea to use. And so now you've got um, your setup uh, ready for calibration. And so that's the mounting procedure. And again, you know, using this approach is helpful because you do have the ability to remove the module and um, position it in order to make the measurement or, or make the, uh, the, the mounting of the probes uh, you know, off from, the, uh, from above the chuck. And then you can mount that uh, back in, in place. Uh, for other systems where maybe you don't quite have that uh, accessibility, uh, then what you would do is just back off your positioners uh, far enough so that you can then work your way in. And having the, uh, the covers can still give you some protection uh, for um, you know, that process. So that's the, uh, you know, the, the general overview on mounting the system onto the probe station. And uh, in a following uh, video, we'll show the calibration procedures. Okay, thank you.